So now we have three planes, okay? So, first of all, let's think about what these three planes are going to look like. All the different ways that they can interact with one another, okay? So, just as we have with two planes, there is the trivial case where all three planes are the same. So, same plane. So we don't have three distinct planes. All three are actually the same. So we've got infinite, infinitely many solutions. OK. What else? Well, we had a couple of situations. Well, we had the situation where you had two parallel planes Okay, um, in the two-plane situation. OK, now you could have a similar situation or similar looking situation like so, OK, where you've got two planes are the same. Um, one is parallel. In which case there are no solutions that solve all three. OK, because there's no intersection for all three. No common intersection for all three, I should say. So infinitely many solutions, or two players the same, one is parallel. Or you have the situation where you've got all three planes being parallel. So three planes parallel. And we've got no solutions. OK. So we've got those. Right. You could have uh, one plane crossing through the other two. OK. Just having to kind of like remind myself of how to draw these because they're quite difficult diagrams. OK, so you've got one that is cutting through. Um, so something. Something like this. So cutting through there. OK, that one. And then I'm going to have to have another one as well. Like so. So uh, you've got two that are parallel. So two parallel, one intersecting. So you've kind of got these two lines, one on the top, one on the bottom. But there's no common point of intersection of all three. So there are no solutions to this situation. OK. Right, so we've got one, two, three, four. Right, so then uh, what else could we have? Well, we could have all three intersecting one another. Right, so probably the most difficult to draw. OK, so really having to think about how to draw this. Um, going out. Not sure how good this is going to appear, but I'm feeling brave. That's the main thing. Uh, no, uh, there we are. Coming out through there. Coming up to there. Very difficult to draw this, so it looks any kind of, any way reasonable. Um, so that's going to need that bit coming in there, 
and coming th coming out there more like. Um, so it's got to go through that point. It's going to come down through there. Uh, that's going to have to go that way there. Um, coming through and coming through as well. And coming through, joining some, something like this. Um, this isn't too bad. But as I said, it's quite difficult to kind of draw. So that it looks in any way accurate. So here you've got uh, three planes intersecting. Okay. So if you've got three planes intersecting at one point, you've got this one solution. Okay, three distinct planes intersecting at one point. Okay, so that's a possible situation. Okay then, right. What else could you have? Well, you could have all three planes intersecting on a line. Okay. So let's try and draw that one. Right, so I'm going to have one... Uh, kind of like big rectangle. The easiest way to draw this. Okay. Um, let's have that as the line of intersection. Like that. Okay, not looking too bad. So something like that. So you've got the three planes intersecting at this one line. So three planes intersecting on a line. Okay, so um, this is referred to as a sheaf, okay, where well, you've got your three planes intersecting on a line, okay, so you've got an infinite number of solutions, okay, all right, and then we've got the last one. Okay, so the last one is where you form a triangular prism. Okay, uh, this one's quite tricky as well. Why do they always have to be so tricky? Coming out like that. Um, Okay, right, so then that's, if I don't draw these reasonably accurately, you're going to be looking at this going, I have got no idea what he's drawn. Oh, you'll, prob you'll probably say that anyway. <laughs> um, oh, this one's pretty bad. This one's pretty shocking. Um, right, so that go going down there. And this one is coming up here, and that one is going to go there. This one I can probably make go a little bit more like that. Um, this one coming up a bit more, I think. Oh, it's not, it's not horrendous. It's not absolutely horrendous. Um, but you've got this triangle in the middle, okay, where you've got the three planes uh, making a triangular prism, okay? So, uh, 
we've got the triangular prism situation. Uh, so you have no solutions. <sighs> right. Okay. So these are the situations. These are the uh, five situations if you're looking at three distinct planes. If you've got um, in uh, non-distinct planes, so two or more of the planes are the same, um, then you could have this situation. You could also have um, two planes the same uh, and one is intersecting, actually. So um, just for kind of like completeness, you could have the, um, the one plane intersecting through. So one plane intersecting through. Looking something like something like that. Okay, so you've got two planes the same, two planes are the same. Uh, one is two planes the same, uh, one intersects through a line. So you'd have infinitely many solutions. OK, so the situation is that there's only one of these where you've got the one solution, this one here. OK, so if your matrix, your 3 by 3 matrix, is non-singular, so the determinant is non-zero, then you have this situation here. So the determinant is not zero. And that is the situation that you would have. For all the others, because you've got infinitely many or no solutions, the determinant is zero. So the majority of problems you're going to have to deal with is um, the determinant being zero, because the determinant being non-zero isn't interesting, OK, and doesn't cause you to do any kind of more investigative work. The first thing you would need to check is to see if you have non-distinct planes. If you looked at your three equations, one is a multiple of the other, then you would have those one of those three situations to deal with. Okay? That's pretty easy to identify, but it'd be the first thing you would need to check. The next thing would be if they are three distinct planes, the next thing is right, are they parallel to one another? Okay? And that would be identified by the fact that you could cancel these three equations down to have the same A, B, and C. They would just have different D values. Okay? If it's not that situation, then it's either down to the two parallel or one intersecting. If none of them are parallel to one another, okay, then it's either this situation, it's a sheaf, or it's a triangular prism. Okay? So determinant being zero could be any of these. You knock it down to whether it's a sheaf or a triangular prism. Now, how do you deal with that? Well, as we've seen, you either have an infinite number of solutions or no solutions. So you then need to deal with the algebraic equations and see through that manipulation whether you have the sheaf or the triangular prism. If you can solve these simultaneous equations in some way to prove no solutions or an infinite number of solutions, then you know which is which. And in the next three videos, we're going to be going through, or it may be more by the time I've made them, um, but the next few videos, we will be going through examples of looking at and determining which situation we have.